All right, guys, things are getting a little serious in this Jonathan Taylor, Indianapolis Colts situation. Um, as you guys know, if you guys follow the channel, I am a Colts fan. And this situation starting to scare me a little bit as a Colts fan. And I'm really not sure what to make of it. I think a lot of Colts fans would agree this situation looks like it could be headed for the worst. And I'm going to be talking about where I think the situation goes and what the Colts and Jonathan Taylor can do to resolve this issue. But before we get into it, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and leave a comment. Let me know where do you think this finishes for Jonathan Taylor and the Indianapolis Colts. But let's talk about Jonathan Taylor, the player to begin with. Because as we know, Jonathan Taylor is an electric running back. 2021, he played all 17 games, rushing for 1,800 yards with 18 touchdowns. He was a threat in the receiving game. And the Colts were just a game short of the playoffs, unfortunately. But Jonathan Taylor led the NFL in rushing yards that season. And he was awesome. Going into the year, I had high expectations for Taylor. And he well exceeded the expectations that I had for him. He was incredible. Had an amazing burst. And he was decent in the receiving game as well with 360 yards and two touchdowns. He had 18 touchdowns on the ground. And he was a huge part of the Colts offense last season. But in 2022, Jonathan Taylor had an ankle injury and he was sidelined for a good amount of time. He sat six games in 2022 and still ran for 861 yards and 11 games, which isn't bad. Four touchdowns, a big drop off for Jonathan Taylor in year two. But one of the most exciting prospects about this offseason for the Colts was the run opportunities that the Colts were going to be getting by drafting Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson is one of the best dual threat quarterbacks that we have ever seen come into the NFL with electric legs. He was awesome as a runner at Florida and the Colts went out and they signed Shane Steichen to be the head coach of this roster. A guy who was the head coach of Jonathan, uh, uh, Jalen Hurts, excuse me, and a guy who really knows how to work with a mobile running quarterback. The proposition of RPOs with Taylor and Richardson was one of the most exciting opportunities in the NFL and me as a Colts fan I was really excited to see where this would go and obviously Jonathan Taylor was up for a contract extension this year there were talks that he was going to get another contract with the Colts they would extend him for a long period of time and what's going on now is part of a deeper issue going around throughout the NFL I'm going to leave a link to the Mock Draft Guys video where he talked about the running back market and kind of where we could see this going because right now the running back market looks like it is headed for a deep downturn and I'm not really sure what to make of it. Obviously, the running backs just held a big Zoom call just a few nights ago to discuss the future of the position because they feel they're underpaid and honestly, they probably are. Now, you can look to players like Devontae Freeman, like Todd Gurley, like Ezekiel Elliott, who got these massive contracts from their teams, and they ended up falling off a cliff really after that. They could not run the way that they used to. Running backs lives in the NFL are short. Jonathan Taylor is entering his fourth year. I think he deserves that second contract. What the money is like, we'll get into that in a little bit, but Jonathan Taylor deserves the money. And when he is on the field, he's the Colts' best skill position player. He is electric on the ground, running behind that offensive line. And he is a huge part of the Colts' success that they have had when they were in the playoffs. In 2020, when they made the playoffs, he was a big part of that game. We had 78 yards and a touchdown on the ground in that playoff game against Buffalo. He was a big part of why they were in the playoff mix in 2021. And you see it in 2022 when he's not on the field. The Colts are a completely different offense. He needs his money. What that contract looks like, I'm not quite so sure. But now we take a look at the situation, which looks like it could be headed for a bit of a disaster. Uh, Colts owner Jim Ursay tweeted this afternoon saying, quote, NFL running back situation. We have negotiated a CBA that took years of effort and hard work and compromise in good faith by both sides. To say now that a specific player category wants another negotiation after the fact is inappropriate. Some agents are selling, quote, bad faith, end quote. I get what Jim Irsay is trying to say. The NFL, the owners, everyone agreed on this contract that basically determined what the salary cap was going to be, how much players were going to be getting paid. That being said, running backs are getting paid 
not very much money. You saw the contract Saquon Barkley got where he's only getting $10 million this year for a one-year extension. I think that is absolutely ridiculous. And if you look around the league at the highest paid running backs in the NFL, Christian McCaffrey tops the list at $16 million per year, followed by Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, and Nick Chubb. Aaron Jones rounds out the top five. None of them are making over $20 million. We saw what was going on with the Devontae Freeman, Ezekiel Elliott contracts. Teams are afraid to pay these running backs big money because after that, they're afraid that their production is going to drop off. These running backs are younger. They're coming in a little bit younger. And players like Taylor, Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs even, I think they deserve their money. And it got a little bit worse when you saw Jim Irsay tweet this. And then in response to this, Jonathan Taylor's owner tweeted, bad faith is not paying your top offensive player. I get it. There's a lot of frustration between the agent and the ownership in Indianapolis. Taylor wants to stay a Colt, it appears. And I'm not really sure what is going to happen next. This does worry me because Jonathan Taylor, we talked about the excitement that he brings to the offense, what he could be for this franchise with Anthony Richardson. The possibilities are endless. I'm very interested to see where this goes and what that money looks like. Where I would pay him, I would be in the range of that 12 to $14 million. I think the Colts should give him a three-year, $42 million extension with some incentives that could get it up to around $50 million. You can obviously come back to that. Maybe there's some options in there to where the Colts could opt out of it, lose that dead money. I'm not sure what it looks like, but it does worry me because I do think that Jonathan Taylor deserves his money. And if he's not on the field for the Colts, this could be a really rough season for Colts fans everywhere. I'm going to be very curious to see where this goes but I do think he should get his money. And the Colts need to extend him as soon as possible and go into the season with this behind them so we can move on, try and win some football games in 2023. But guys, Colts Nation, NFL fans, where do you think this heads? Do you think Jonathan Taylor will get the money he deserves? Or where do you think this goes for all parties involved? And what do you think his value is worth on the open market? Let me know down in the comment section below, but that's going to do it for me. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.